Hi again folks, how you all doing? So this is a Hornby Class 56 that was sent to me by a chap called Bill. Um, he said that this is a total non-runner and that he's normally able to fix his locomotives but not this one. Uh, so let's turn on the power. Well the lights are working but uh, there's not a cheap out of the motor and it's pulling about 100 milliamps on the meter. Okay, well, let's shove it into the shed and see what's up. Right then, a class 56. I haven't worked on a class 56 before um, and I think this has a motor I've not worked on before. Uh, does this pop out? I think we'll maybe get the body off. But yeah, nice locomotive for 56 um, and I'm in the market for one because it's uh, a diesel I don't have. I'd quite like to get a hold of one. Uh, okay, let's see, does this just pop off? Clips there and there. There's something rattling about it. Yeah, I think we've got a loose driver, I think. So yeah, it's a Ringfield motor, but not the usual one. How does this come out? It's kind of held in place front and back. And there's two little uh, things at the sides. I think we have to just pull it like that. Yep. Let's get some uh, power directly onto the brushes and see if this motor spins. Mm, Do you know it doesn't? I think what we'll do is take this piece off here there right can I get the brushes out that one out The spring, and get this one out as well. Get that one out. That's the brushes out. They're a bit dirty, but they're okay. There's one of the springs. Where's the other one? It's still inside there. Just tiny wee short springs. All right. So now. I've just got this bit to get out. If I undo the three screws under here, let's get that out. Can I remove these wheels? And there is a pickup. It's very like a Lima motor. That pick up there. Get this plate off. And there is a very dirty armature. There's a bit of fluff and gunk and god knows what in there. Does that pop out? Come on out, you come. Yes, it does. Right, okay. So we've got the armature out, so we can clean up the commutator and have a wee test, but I don't see any broken wires in it. Brand new can of WD-40 contact cleaner. Some tea cut on it just to deep clean it. Right, we'll do a wee continuity test between the poles. It all seems good. I'm sure there's nothing between the poles and the shaft. No, the armature seems okay. 
So that's good news. We'll get these brushes into the tea strainer as they'll go into the sonic cleaner. Springs as well. Does this come out? It does. There we go. It's coming. It's just held in that brass pin. Now we can get the gears out. And there's a lot of fluff and gunk in there. Wow. Look at that. So that wouldn't have helped matters. The gears seem to be in okay condition. We'll give them a file. And then we can get, in and get this cleaned properly. There's little plastic washers on there, so we need to be mindful of those. Right, okay, that's cleaned up. Uh, the gears are clean. That little pin will go in the sonic cleaner as well. The armature is okay. It's the faceplate screws, it's the faceplate with its little washers. Uh, screws for that. Screws for the underframe. Give this a wee clean. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a, a Lima vibe from this model. Uh, the wheels are brass like like Lima ones. Um, let's just see. Traction tires are loose. At least one is. Yeah, this was that one. Yeah. Nah. Uh, right. We'll see what traction tires we've got for it. I actually had to check the underside because as I was working on this, I thought maybe this is a Lima model. <laughs> but it's not. It says Hornby Model Railways. So I'm guessing this is a tooling they got from Lima. I don't know, let me know in the comments. Don't know anything about the history of this one. No, it's not those either. Right, I shall have to go online and see if we can figure out what traction tires these take. Okay, so I managed to find the uh, replacement traction tires for these and I've ordered them up. Uh, they'll take a couple of days to come, I think. So, in the meantime, I think what we'll do is we'll put all this back together and see if we can get this motor to spin. Okay, so the brushes and springs have been in the Sonic Cleaner. Um, we'll give the gears a bit of a file. We'll get some silicon grease onto the gears. That one will go there. And that one will go there, I think. And that one goes in there, gear in place, there we go, alright, uh, ok, let's see if we can fit this back into here, alright, the gear's falling off, let's do it upside down, so that wants to go on like that, there. Right, get these screws in. Right, pop the brushes in first of all, like that. And then see if we can set the springs on top. Right. Let's see if we can push down these caps. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, I don't think that was a good idea doing it that way. It's always a learning process when you're not familiar with the motor. Right, take that out. 
take that off for now. And what we want to do is get these springs out again. So I want to get these caps right down inside. We have to pop this in the vise. There we go, right. So, what we'll do is we'll put these over the armature shaft like that. We'll pop the springs into there. See the brushes in. There must be an easier way to do this. I'm just kind of winging it. Right, so they will sit in there. And then we can get that to there and just snap it together. That's done it. Right. What do I do with those screws? There they are. Okay, right. Um, that seems to spin okay. Let's stick a battery on this now and see if it goes. Nope. The armature's twitching. Okay, I had a look at the server sheet for this, and uh, the wiring appears to be correct. Um, but applying power directly to the brush terminals, you can see the lights are flickering, but the motor's not spinning. Um, I think this is shorting somewhere. There's, you know, there's going to be uh, uh, two resistors in there and in there, and there's the capacitor there. Um, yeah, something is shorting, I think. Okay, so I'm going to desolder the wires, make sure the motor actually works, and then we'll have to try and figure out what is causing a short circuit. I suspect either the resistors or the capacitor, um, but I'm going to check the front bogey just in case there's been some jiggery faffery going on and there's a sneaky little short circuit in here. I doubt it, but you just never know. Right, so it's positive on this side, negative on the other side. Yeah, they're all okay. That off. Go on that. Come on. Oh. That's kind of what I didn't want to happen, but never mind. Right, okay. Will this spin with the battery now? No. Wow. Why not? I can see this brush is definitely touching the commutator. Or is it? Wonder. I wonder. Let's take this off again. I'm starting to think the brushes aren't touching the commutator. I mean, those springs were pretty compressed. Hmm. Let's see. That goes in there. Yeah, it does push out. I'm going to give these springs a bit of a stretch. Not too much. That one. Yeah, this could be tricky.
kind of annoyed with myself for not desoldering that sooner and testing the motor. But I had every confidence that the motor was okay. But possibly not. Let's see. In. Will that work at that? Here we go. <laughs> Something as simple as that. The springs have got compressed, so the brushes weren't really touching the commutator. I believe this may be a, a Daypol model that maybe originated from a mainline one. I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody will put me right in the comments there. But does that mean this will now work? Right, okay, I think we need to get the old solder off of this first. Nice big holes on those terminals, so that's good. That. Okay, so with the wires attached, there she goes. Yeah, don't like the way that fits at all, but we're in. Right, okay. Let's get a look at this front bogey. And we'll give the front wheels a clean. Inside and out. Right, does this work? There we go. A little bit of smoke coming out of it though. And just a wee bit of dirt. Right, okay. Um, so I think it's basically repaired, but I'm going to wait on the new traction tyres coming before we uh, pull it out of the shed. Okay, so a couple of days later, the traction tyres came and I've just fitted them. Um, the part number is X8442, and I got these from the new modeler shop. It's the only place I could find online that had them in stock. So, I think we're good to go. Let's just pop this on. And there. there we go. Alright, okay. Right, why well, don't pull out the shed? Okay then, let's bring it out.
So there we are, that's this Hornby Class 56 back in action. Um, yeah, a simple solution to a simple problem, but uh, I really don't like these push-in cap style brush holders. Um, the springs have become over compressed and uh, the brushes had no pressure on them, you know, no pressure on the, the commutator. So I just gave the springs a wee stretch and that sorted it. But uh, yeah, I was a wee bit puzzled initially. I don't know the history of this particular model, but it's, uh, it's built very much like a Lima model. Um, definitely a tooling Hornby acquired, I think. And it's, uh, you know, it's not a bad model really. Um, the motor's a bit whiny and I think a CD motor would be worth trying on this. But otherwise it runs okay. Uh, I don't have a class 56, so maybe I'll pick one up at some point. I'll need to uh, look up to see what ones are available and add one to my locals to get list. Okay, I shall get this packed up and send back to Bill. Catch us later, folks.